no more shackles, no more chains. Hallelujah. How many are glad that the Holy Spirit got out into the ditch of despair and pulled you out? Hallelujah. Jesus traded places. Yeah. Think about it. No more bondage. I am free. No more shackles. No more chains. Come on. No more bondage. I am free. Come on. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. I am free. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage. I am free. Talk to Jesus. Divine exchange. It's you and him. Hallelujah. He did it just for you. Amen. Glory. On the cross, on my pain, and the guilt and the shame, Jesus suffering to the grave to make me free oh the blood that was shed it now flows to cover sin it washes clean if you're in its heel 
Freedom. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And when you are free indeed, you can sing a new song. He gives you a new song. You can't sing that new song without a heart transformation. Hallelujah. Can we do this just a holy part again? so awesome to be in his presence just remain standing where you are for a few minutes where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there's only one revolution in human history that produced good results and it was the american revolution this nation has not been perfect but she's done more than any other nation to try to correct her wrongs because she's founded on perfect principles so when you dishonor this flag, you dishonor every veteran and every person that ever gave their life for our liberties. And it's amazing to me that people can't see that do dishonor the flag, that they have the liberty to do that, so saying they don't is obviously a lie. They don't realize that they're deceived, and we need to reach out with grace and compassion but I'm telling you, I appreciate that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Just remain standing as again we honor our flag. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were 
Galatians 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Thank God for national liberty, but thank God for spiritual liberty. Amen. Our liberty always comes at the cost of of life and blood. And his death gives us the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter 2.16, is free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. I think that's such a fascinating sentence because it talks about uh, bond servants and liberty in the same verse. We are really set free to serve him, and by serving him, we experience a liberty that the world just doesn't understand. Amen. Amen. Honor all people. Honor all people. I'll read that again. We don't hate around here. Those who don't agree with us, we honor them as human beings created in the image of God. Honor all people, love your brothers and sisters in Christ, fear the Lord, reverence the Lord, and honor the king. And since we don't have a king, we'll just have to honor those that are in office or at least the office. <laughs> what can I say? Peter said that false teachers will promise liberty while they themselves are slaves to corruption. And that's in the same chapter, the 19th verse. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the slaves of corruption. For by or whatever or whom a person is overcome, by him also is he brought into bondage. So the Word of God gives us a warning here that there is a false liberty that is promised by false teachers and false religions that in reality is a trap and an imprisonment. And we need to understand what real liberty is. Some people think that liberty is the absence of laws. But James says the law of the spirit of liberty. Paul says the law of the spirit of liberty. You see, in the natural, it's the laws of the land that give you liberty. If there was no law that says thou shalt not steal, you couldn't own anything. If there was no law that says thou shalt not kill, you wouldn't be able to live. If there were no traffic laws, some of you drive more like me. <laughs> but how many know that when you violate a traffic law, it can result in injury or death. And so we need to understand that laws are not given to destroy liberty. Laws are given to protect liberty. Amen. Just laws, laws that are based on the laws of God. And so because of the laws that says you can't come in here and, and stop us from worshiping, we have liberty 
to worship. I just want you to realize that when, when people say, well, if you really... Somebody said to me one time, if you really had liberty, you wouldn't have to worry about speed limits or stop signs. And I said, you know, that's just crazy. There's a reason for, and, 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 and then I hear this, I'm stuttering for some reason. Then I hear this, well, uh, when the New Testament came along, it did away with all of the laws of God. <laughs> it did away with you trying to be saved by keeping rules. And God moved on the inside and put his laws in your heart. Since when in the New Testament are you allowed to steal, kill, take the Lord's name in vain, commit adultery, and dishonor your parents? Huh? Is that what liberty is all about? So I wanted to kind of set some things straight here that it's actually because we have laws and when there's a flagrant disregard for laws and law enforcement, it results in mayhem. It does not result in more liberty it results in destruction and death and chaos and anarchy. And we've seen that play out in our major cities. I think they said in Portland, Oregon, murder has gone up 500%. And the reporters called it a summer of love. God help us. Help us to understand what liberty is all about. One of the earliest warnings given in Scripture is if you don't conquer the sin in your life, that sin will conquer you and bring you into slavery. You see, there are things that, you know, I've had people say, well, I've got the freedom to... To, to drink if I want to. I got the freedom to smoke a little weed if I want to. I got the freedom to shoot up if I want to. Let me tell you something. Those things that you call freedom are things that ensnare. And so <laughs> Paul said, I have the liberty to do a lot of things, but it's not expedient or necessary that I should. Just because you're allowed to do something don't mean it's right. I'm telling you for too long, before too long, mark my word, it will be across the board in the United States that marijuana will be legal and you'll have Christians like, I have an spiritual experience. <laughs> yeah. Hope we'd all not do that. <laughs> you know, because folks there's no liberty. People that tell you you can live however you want to, that once you're saved, you can just go out and do whatever you want to do and live in sin, and God, what you do in the flesh don't affect your spirit. They're not really teachers of liberty. They're teachers of slavery. Because listen to what God says to Cain. How many remember Cain offered a sacrifice to God and he just took some grain and some corn and some stuff from the fields that he was... Uh, and he knew God's. God, listen, God and Cain talked back and forth. Cain wasn't even surprised when God talked to him. And he knew what God expected out of him. Let me tell you something. From the beginning of time, the offered sacrifice that God will accept is a picture of the Lamb of God. And Abel brought a sacrifice of a lamb. Cain said, I'll, I, he, listen, Cain wasn't an atheist. He wasn't an agnostic. He was just somebody who said, I'll do this my way. I don't care how God says to do it. And God said, I have a warning for you, Cain. Cain's really mad because God didn't accept it his way. And I'm going to tell you today, you can go wherever you want to to church, do whatever you want to do. I want you to understand this right now. You have the liberty to do that, but God only accepts it when it's done his way. Why? Because his way is the right way. And he is the way. So God says to Cain, why are you so angry? Genesis 4, 7. If you do well, will you not be accepted? Do you ever notice people get jealous when you're blessed of God? And God's saying to them, if you straighten up and do right, I could bless you too. If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, listen, sin lies at the door. Its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Amen. 
Read that again. Its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. This now says it in the Amplified. If you do well by believing me and doing what's acceptable and pleasing to me, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well and you ignore my instruction, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is to overpower you, but you must master it. There are things that enslave. Things that destroy your liberty. Laziness is not a liberty. It's a bondage. It will enslave you. It will destroy you. It will destroy your mobility. I know people that because it... I don't know if... Let me just say this. More than one over the years, I've known a lot, of people as they get older, they just quit moving when they can. And before too long, their muscles atrophy and then they can't. Then they're bed fast, and then what? Well, I have the liberty to just sit here and not get up and go up and down those stairs or walk to the mailbox. I have the liberty to not have to do anything I don't want to do. That's laziness, and that won't produce liberty. That will destroy liberty Amen. in the natural. Let me tell you something. You have a spiritual being, and you have spiritual muscles, and you need to not just be spiritually lazy and atrophy sets in to where you can't do anything. Um, you're not going to like everything I say this morning, but that's good for you. <laughs> Greed will bring you into bondage. I sat and talked to an elder gentleman that had amassed a large sum of money over the years. He became convinced that his family didn't love him, was just waiting on him to die so they could acquire their inheritance. Well, I don't know if that was true or not. But with the attitude he had, he may have created his own reality. Are you listening? And what he had done was one by one knock him out of his will and tell him, you're getting nothing from me. And he was upset because he was all alone and none of his family would come to see him. <laughs> you know what happened? His greed enslaved him. I have visited and talked with people who have amassed enough wealth to live comfortably way beyond their physical years and bless a lot of other people, but the love of that money has enslaved them. A miser is not at liberty to enjoy life. And you know what? They might as well be flat broke. They might as well not have anything because I've seen little kids in third world countries with much more joy and happiness and richness in life life than these old misers that are so afraid. You can't, they, they don't even trust a friendship. They might want what I've got. I'll tell you what, that's what happened to the rich young ruler. It was not that he was so wealthy that having wealth was a sin. It was that his wealth possessed him instead of him possessing his wealth. You want liberty in that area? Start being generous. You can't outgive God anyway. Amen. Amen. I'll bet, Pastor, what if, uh, what if I'm, I'm saving it for a rainy day? I'm going to tell you something. Your 401Ks could be gone in an instant. Your bank accounts, the FDIC does not have enough backup to handle a national catastrophe financially. It could be gone in an instant. Listen, I know what it is to have a little bit in the bank, and I know what it is to be so poor that you can't even pay attention. But let me tell you something. We've been happy either way. I thank God for the beautiful wife he's given me and the relationship we've had. When we were so poor... I don't go into all those bad jokes, but I'd have to eat cereal with a, with a fork so she could have milk for hers. <laughs> I mean, we were broke. Old rusty cars, some of you knew us back then. I'm not making this up. I worked at a Woolworth 5 and 10 in downtown Akron for minimum wage. And you know what? I was as happy 
as I could be because Jesus said a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. It's okay to have some wealth, but don't you dare let that be your God and have you because it'll bring you into slavery. The love, the Bible does not say money is the root of all evil. It doesn't. It says the love of money. Amen? It's kind of inconvenient not to have any at all. But it shouldn't be what your life is all about. Amen? You know, when my mom and dad went to be with the Lord, they, they left absolutely nothing in the bank for me because they'd given everything away. That's the way they'd lived. They were the happiest people I knew. And you know what? This ministry's here, so they left me nothing, and they left me everything. Amen. Think about that. <laughs> Unrestrained lust for anything will capture you and enslave you and in destroy your liberty. Well, I can watch those kind of movies if I want to. After a while, you won't be able to turn them off. That will be an addiction. Power, how, how many sees the power-hungry people that are willing to just trample over our laws and destroy our nation to maintain power? They're enslaved. They're not liberty. Even, even an unrestrained lust for food will enslave you. It will destroy you. I want you to understand, alcohol, uh, drugs, addictions, all these things as, as people can tell you today, and we've all battled addictions in one way or another. Amen. Some of you are addicted to gossip. Boy, I didn't get very many amens there. Huh? Did you know what one of the worst addictions is that enslaves more people than anything else? You ready? Wrong patterns of thinking. Amen. This is why you have to get into the Scriptures and renew your mind. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, I beg you, I implore you, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Be not conformed. That's just your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world. But listen, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By, say it with me. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Listen, I have to quit thinking like I want to think and get into the Word and see how God wants me to think. Have any of you seen a movie came out, I think it was last year, called The Overcomer? Anybody seen that besides me? If you haven't seen it, go watch it or get it and watch it. it it's tremendous. This, this little teenage girl has been told by the world what she is and who she is and who she isn't. But, but the, the lady says, just get into Ephesians 1 and 2 and find out who you are in Christ. One day, she walks into the room liberated and victorious, set free by changing how she thought by the Word of God. She's, she's like, I'm a child of God. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm more than a conqueror. I am who God says I am, and I can do what He says I can do. I can do all things. Listen, the Word of God will change your thinking. This computer's got to be reprogrammed. Now, I'll get it straight in one area, and then I'll be messed up in another. I have. Any, anybody besides me still working on it? Changing the stinking thinking. Thinking you need to get even with people will bring you into bondage. Carrying offense doesn't hurt the person you're offended at, but it'll mess you up for two or three days and longer. Grudges bind you. How many's heard the, the, the story that I can't remember who it was that said it, but they said, you know what? I finally forgave that person and set a prisoner free, but the prisoner wasn't them, it was me. They don't even care. 
You're mad at somebody over something they said to you a long time ago that hurt your little feelings, and they don't, they're going on with their life. They don't even remember they said it half the time. I said, but Pastor, you don't know what horrible things they did to me. Let me tell you something. God's grace is sufficient. And if you will allow the Word of God to change the way you think, you will be set free. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You can be captured. You can, was, I have the freedom to say whatever I want. Yeah, you're going to be bound by the words that you say. And you're going to get caught in your own mouth trap. <laughs> Anger. Jealousy. You say, well, Peter likens those who are recaptured by former things to two different animals. The dog returning to his vomit or the pig to the mud hole. You, what's the problem with the dog and the pig? They haven't had their natures changed. You can clean up a pig and put deodorant and perfume on a pig and put a pink bow around its neck and let it find a hog waller on a hot day and they're going to get right back in the mud. It's the nature of the pig. See, the Word of God will change your nature. Now, this is pretty gross, but that dog will eat that vomit right back up. And it made him sick to start with or he wouldn't have thrown it up, but here he goes again. Return to your addictions is a dog returning to its vomit. God doesn't want you to do that. There's a reason why you expelled that. Amen. You know, there, there's a couple of kings in the Bible who are the worst slaves of all, and they're kings. One was King Herod in the time of Christ. He was... He was so afraid of others taking his throne. Herod the Great and then Herod the Tetrarch later, that the son of Herod the Great. Both of them were enslaved by public opinion. They worried about what Caesar would do. They worried about what the people would do. They worried about what the priests would do. And, most, and, and Herod was so afraid of his wife, which really wasn't his wife, was his brother's wife. He was worried about what she would do. And then when he heard that Jesus was working miracles, he thought John the Baptist had ridden, risen from the dead, and he worried about what he would do. He was on the throne, but he was enslaved. King Saul in the Old Testament begins such an awesome ministry. He's anointed of God. He's, he's, he goes out and he does great things, but he quits listening to God's instruction and decides to do things his way, and he lives a miserable life. Instead of being proud of David for whipping the enemy armies after he took Goliath down, he became jealous. And then he became fearful that he would lose his throne. Uh, he was told to destroy the Amalekites and he let Agag, the king, escape and part of his family. 400 years later, a descendant of Agag tries to destroy the nation of Israel. His name is Haman, the Agagite in the book of Esther. If God says get rid of something, get rid of it. Did you know who brought the news of Saul's death to David? An Amalekite. What you don't destroy will destroy you. Well, Pastor, how, how do I do that? I'm so glad you asked. Romans 6, 12 through 16. Do not therefore let sin reign in your mortal bodies that you should obey it in its lusts. Don't present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Don't use your body to give in to every temptation that comes your way. There are traps there. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not 
have dominion over you. Read that sentence with me. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you're not under law but under grace. What then? Be shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves to whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? Man, I love this book. This book has changed my life. This book has gotten me out of trouble more often than you can imagine because the enemy would always want to take you as a prisoner of war, as a slave. I'll say, Pastor, how do I do it? Get full of the Holy Ghost. You cannot do this on your own. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Folks, when you submit your life to God and you invite God to come into your life and the Holy Spirit resides in you, the Holy Spirit gives you the power to resist temptation, to overcome sin, and to keep you at liberty. Every now and then, one of us get overtaken in a fault, don't we? We get ensnared. You know what the rest of the body ought to do? Go set the prisoner free. Amen. Brethren, if any one of you be overtaken in a fault, let Galatians 6, 1, let he who is spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. God, we need to be setting people free, each other free. We need to work together to keep the body of Christ in liberty. What was the first verse? Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Folks, I cannot live a godly life on my own. My flesh is as stinking and as rotten as anybody else's in here. Being up here talking to you don't mean that I'm better than you or I've already arrived or I'm not tempted or I never make mistakes. Lord knows I make mistakes. I fail and I fall. But it is not my intention nor is it my practice to live a deliberate lifestyle of sin. Amen. That's the difference. So I'm not up here as some self-righteous person who's arrived. If I was that far ahead of you, I couldn't help you. But listen, Paul talks about a struggle in Romans 7. He says, the good things that I want to do, I don't. And those horrible things that I said I'll never do again, I don't want to do that, that's what I do. Anybody ever lived with Paul in Romans 7? I have. And he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? from the body of this death. And had it stopped there and the next chapter hadn't been written, it'd be a pretty hopeless situation. But he went on to say, he will through the power of the cross and the blood of Jesus. And then he says this. I want you to hear this in the next chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Spirit, for the law of the spirit of life. I love that phrase. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. I want you to notice here. How many know that God gave them a list of rules that started out with just 10 commandments and wound up with 318 different rules and nobody could keep them? Amen. And if you go by Jesus' standards, none of you have even kept all the 10 commandments. Me either. Amen. If you look to lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. If you have hate in your heart, you're a murderer, huh? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever taken the Lord's name in vain? You know why? It's not in man that walks to direct his own steps. You cannot do it on your own. Amen. 
and if you try, you will fail and you will be discouraged and you'll live a life of condemnation. This message is going to set somebody free today. Pastor, I have liberty in Christ, so I don't have to read my Bible and pray every day. Well, how are you going to transform your mind? Quit looking at it as a duty and look at it as a liberty and a privilege. I, do you know how many people would give anything if they had a Bible to read in other countries? Hey, I get to. Amen. Do you have to act like that at that church? No, you don't have to, but I get to. I'm not forced to read my Bible. I'm not forced to pray for so long. But I found out reading and praying enforces the liberty and keeps me strong. Get this. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did whoo, by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the, righteousness requ that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to to the Spirit. I'm always saying under my breath sometimes, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. God, I want to do this my way, but I need to do it your way. Yeah. I need the Spirit of the living God. And boy, do I feel His presence in this house this morning. I need Him to guide me and to lead me. I've seen people totally demon-possessed. Well, I want to be totally Holy Ghost-possessed. Oh, yeah. that be crazy? Wouldn't that be incredible? Just, how, how do you do that? Just renew your mind in the Word and turn the reins over to the Holy Spirit. Say, so what do you mean, the reins? When Jesus came up out of the waters of baptism, the Bible says, and He was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness driven not the Holy Spirit behind with a whip, but inside directing. Anybody ever ride a horse in here know what those reins do? We used to sing a song in the old church, there's something within me that's holding the reins. Holy Ghost, hold the reins. Pull back when it's time to stop. Kick me in the ribs when it's time to run. Hallelujah. How many want him to hold the reins in your life? You can't do it on your own. You don't have the strength. I don't care how good you think you are. You need an inside driver. Amen. Pulling back. I'm telling you, every time I've ever gotten in trouble since I've been saved, is it's I ran the red light. Amen. How many know if you'll watch that there's a warning there? Don't, don't say that. Don't do that. Well, I'm going to anyway. There's the problem. Ye shall know the truth. Renew your mind in the Word. And the truth shall make you free. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That means in your actions. You see, and so you've got to understand that there's not one of us in here that has the ability to live a godly life. If we did, we wouldn't need him to have come down here and be our example and go to the cross for us and die in our place and then send back the empowering presence and indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Would we have needed that? Can't do it on your own. I can't do it on my own. Where, hear, hear the verse again. Now, the Lord is that spirit. How many has invited him to just take over your life, surrendered your life to him? Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I'm going to tell you, the most liberating thing in the world is when you can lay your head down on your pillow at night and know that there's nothing hidden or nothing corrupt or nothing in your life that you and Jesus haven't dealt with that day. Amen. That is liberating. I have no fear 
because I'm in Christ and it's His righteousness in me, not that I've made it myself. But I have no fear that when the trumpet sounds at all, I'm not going to make it because I've got this fault or that fault. No, because my righteousness is of Him. And the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. And it's going to quicken this mortal body when the trump of God sounds. And I believe it could be soon. I'm going to say this phrase, and then you're going to say it with me. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Get used to saying that. When things come your way and you don't know what to do and you're ready to handle it on your own, the law of the spirit of liberty in Christ Jesus will set you free from the law of sin and death. Stand with me. King Saul continued to give in to his jealous rages until a demonic spirit of jealousy possessed him and destroyed him. David would come and play anointed music and the Holy Spirit would cause that evil spirit to leave Saul, but Saul kept inviting it back. If you want to operate in liberty, be careful what you harbor. Give no place to the devil. Because if you invite him long enough, God's going to say, if that's what they want, have at it. And you'll get what you want. But you won't like what you get. So I wanted to give you that warning. Saul had the ability and the power to continue in the anointing of God, but instead he chose to nurse jealousy until jealousy possessed him. Maybe not jealousy for you. Whatever it is for you, God says you can find freedom in my presence this morning. If you want it. Altars are open if you want to pray. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's do that again. There's power. There is power.